Hey everyone, this is Lucy from kbeautyhobby.com. I thought this was a good time to make an update video on my hair situation. I made one about my female pattern hair loss and hair thinning, but it's been many, many months since then and I've been doing some other things as well that I feel are helping. So this is just a video about what's helping me. This is not medical advice for you if you have hair loss issues, balding, thinning, especially if they're sudden and very different from what you experience typically, please see a doctor. This video is just about what worked for me and if there are some helpful little nuggets for you, definitely feel free to implement. But again, talk to your doctor, that's going to be the best. I'm going to break up this video into two general categories. It will be all in one video, but there will be two sections. Section one, the first one we're going to do is things that long-term helped me make my hair thicker, denser, and shed less, and kind of grow thicker. That's section one. Section two will be more short-term cosmetic, sort of self-esteem boosting things that make a good visual difference, but overall don't really make your hair thicker or denser, but they do help visually, kind of like makeup versus skincare sort of situation, okay? To recap, I have really fine straight blonde hair. It's colored with henna typically, including right now. And a couple of years ago, I've noticed that it was really a lot thinner than, than usual. I typically don't have very thick hair, not as thick as I would like, but it was really, really getting thin to a point where I could see scalp, I could see an outline of my entire skull if I was standing against the light and the light was shining from behind and I looked in the mirror, I could see the entire skull just outlined and I thought that was not okay. So I did a little bit of research, I watched some dermatologist videos and I started on Rogaine, which is a brand name for Minoxidil. The Kirkland brand Minoxidil has been working just as well for me. I tried Minoxidil in college years and years ago because again my hair was not as thick as I wanted it to be, but it was not as bad as it got a couple years ago here. But the droppers that I've tried, the solution, the liquid, makes the hair really, really greasy and gross and it was not easy to apply so I abandoned it rather quickly. The foam is much, much easier. Again, I am using the Kirkland one now because it's cheaper, but I'll put links to the description box for everything. If Rogaine is what you prefer, fine. Based on the content that I've watched put out by dermatologists, 5% is what you'd want. And uh, for women, Rogaine is a lot weaker than that. And if you find the female Rogaine or female Minoxidil 5% formula, it is more expensive for some reason than the men's 5%. So I'm buying the men's Kirkland Minoxidil 5% foam and I'm applying it every single night before bed. It is not greasy, it is not oily, it does cause a bit of temporary scalp irritation for some people, it did for me. When I first started using this, it was definitely making my scalp a little bit itchy and it's not the Minoxidil itself, it's propylene glycol in there, the penetration agent. So if you are experiencing that, it's considered pretty normal just depending on the severity. For me, it went away within a couple of weeks. That was no big deal. What was more disheartening, I'd say, is four to six weeks after using minoxidil, your hair will start to fall out more than it already had as the hair growth cycles sink. It is the hair that you would have lost naturally anyway, but it just kind of speeds up that process. It is temporary, but it's not a fun thing. I'll show you a couple ways to kind of hide that in the second section of the video. But overall, this gave me really good results. I don't mind using it every night. It became part of my routine. I do my skincare first, then I brush my teeth and do the Rogaine and all that. And I don't wash my hair every day. It's just personal preference every other day. This does not make my hair greasy. It does make the roots kind of stick together a little bit when I apply it first. You're supposed to apply it to the scalp, but of course some of it gets to the roots as well. So when it dries, it almost looks like you put hair gel on the roots. However, brushing my hair gently in the morning completely makes that not a thing, so it's no longer noticeable. For example, I used this last night. You can't see it's not uh, crunchy or anything up here. So this has been a really nice contributor. And I showed the results in the prior video, but I'll put the pictures here again for you. It's hard to isolate the effects of one specific thing on the hair because, again, following the advice of professionals online and as well as my own doctor, I did talk to her about that as well, I am trying everything that I could think of all at once because I do not have time to try one thing, then stop it, then do another thing, then stop it and see what's better. 
I am not a controlled scientific experiment. I'm not trying to develop a new product. I am just trying to get some of my hair back and not look like, um, what is that character's name? Caillou, <laughs> the little cartoon guy with uh, just a couple hair strands. So I've been also doing the rosemary oil. I just got this Now brand rosemary oil and it can be irritating to the scalp. So the way that I've been using it is just adding a few drops to my shampoo, mixing it in in my palm. I strongly caution you against pouring essential oils into an, a container of a product because that can mess with the preservative systems. You don't really want to play kitchen chemist, but it's okay to mix things in your palm just for a single use sort of situation. So I add this to my shampoo, I put the shampoo on the scalp, let it sit there for a couple of minutes and then rinse off as usual, whatever. If it's doing something, awesome. I can't really isolate that from the Rogaine situation, but together I've been using that and it's fine. I have tried different shampoos with uh, DHT blockers, I talked about those in my first video. I have not seen any sort of difference at all. And I did not like the shampoos, the couple that I've tried. I've tried Gra uh, Grande Lash, or it's not Grande Lash, but it's the same brand that makes the Grande Lash. They also have a shampoo. I tried that one, I tried another one by some doctor, and I just, I felt like the shampoos didn't clean my hair really well. They were very expensive. They washed out my henna really quickly. So I just went back to my regular shampoo that I use, which is Amica Color Vault, and I add the rosemary oil to it, and it feels like it's the same sort of thing, and it cleans better and doesn't fade my color. If you do wanna try some of those other shampoos, definitely go for it, or if you are using them successfully, great, good for you. Part of having thicker hair or fuller ponytail is not just making sure that you have enough of it growing, but it's also making sure that the hair you do have isn't snapping because it can snap or break anywhere from the root all the way to the end. And of course, if you're losing a lot of hair and it's snapping right here, your ponytail is going to get thinner and thinner and thinner because it's just not that much length. So I broke down and bought the expensive Olaplex. This is the Olaplex number no. three hair perfecter. I have the jumbo one now. I started with a smaller one and you don't need much um, of this. Don't ask me about the science of this. I know they hold a lot of patents and it's basically meant to strengthen the bonds in your hair. This is not a conditioner. This is a pre-shampoo treatment. It's a bond builder. So you use it one time a week or if your hair is very, very damaged, which mine is not, but if your hair is very, very damaged, you can do it two to three times a week when you're first starting. It's supposed to be applied to damp towel dried hair. I usually do this while I'm taking a nice bath. I get my hair wet, kind of wring it out, towel dry it, spread this from root to tip, leave it on for at least 10 minutes, sometimes more. Sometimes I'll watch YouTube while I'm doing it or Hulu or something like that or TikTok and then shampoo as usual. And this is helping prevent some of that breakage. At least I feel like for me it is helping and it doesn't take much um, amount wise to spread it on my hair because it's not very long. Of course, longer hair will take more, but still this is pricey. This is definitely not a budget product, but it does not take much, so it lasts me quite a while. Once the hair is washed, conditioned, etc., there's some advice online not to ever brush or comb wet hair. If I don't brush or comb my damp hair, I will not be able to detangle it once it's dry. So I do make a choice to use a white tooth comb. However, I also use products like this one. This is a wonderful, wonderful Korean, very budget friendly hair serum. It's Mizen Sen. I'm probably not pronouncing the brand name right. They changed the packaging since I bought this. I put a couple pumps of this in my palms on wash days. Once the hair is clean but still damp, I apply it from about ear level down. It smells absolutely divine, but then the scent doesn't linger. So if you're a perfume wearer or you just don't want scents, don't worry, this doesn't stick around or anything. But it smells very, very nice when you're applying it. And it just creates this nice slip to the hair. And when I'm combing it out, I don't have the snagging or anything. It makes the hair really nice and shiny. Again, it smells really good. It's a big, big selling point for me, the scent. It costs under $12, which is also really nice. Uh, and uh, once the hair is dry, it, uh, you know, you can't see it. It's not oily or greasy or anything like that. It just kind of helps protect the hair a little bit more from breakage and friction and things like that. The one new thing that makes a difference for me that I've introduced since the last video is this. Apologies in advance, this is an investment. This is not a budget product, but I do have a code with them, Hobbit HR. I'll put that in the description box, I'll put it on the screen as well, but you can save some money on this. This is the Curd Body Hair Helmet, or I call it a hair helmet because, see, it looks like 
a helmet. It has LED lights all around here. It has Bluetooth speaker headphones there. And then it has an LED screen right here that shows you the time that's left. All you do is put this on and use it for 10 minutes every day. There's an on button. There it is. See all the lights. Turning it on also pairs it with your cell phone or whatever your device of choice is if you want to listen to some Bluetooth audio. It's very comfortable, comes in two sizes. These head things, the ear things are adjustable, movable. And then it has these little, they look like suction cups, but they're not suction cups. They're just little kind of cushions. They're soft silicone and they just distribute the weight of the helmet on your head and kind of make sure that the lights are separated from your skin, that, that the helmet is not just lying on top of your skin, just for comfort. It's very nice. This was provided to me for free. However, it was provided to me for free because I asked for it. I've worked with Current Body before. I really like their devices. You may have even seen some of their devices, like their LED mask. And it made a cameo in Emily in Paris in the latest season. It's a really well-known brand and they make really, really nice devices. This one is one of their newer launches and first it launched in the UK and then it had to go through the approval process for you the, for the US. So I had to wait for a bit because I asked them right when this launched and then we had to wait for the clearance and wait for even things like chargers to become available for our United States outlets. But I've patiently waited and I got it. I've been using it now for I think five months, at least four months, but I think it's been longer now. Every single night I do it before I wash my hair and it is just wonderful. I keep it in the bedroom. It comes with a nice base to set it on while it's charging. And this is not an ad for them. This is not a sponsored video. I just thought I'd show it to you because I know there are devices like this on the market and they cost a lot of money. And I, I see experts endorse them. And while I'm not an expert, I'm somebody who actually has hair thinning. And a lot of the dermatologists that endorse uh, devices like this or current body, while they are experts, they themselves don't have thinning hair. And I feel like it's really nice to hear from somebody that you hopefully trust, like me, who has the issue that they're dealing with. This does not hurt, anything like that. There's absolutely no discomfort. Just put it on, turn it on. I watch TikTok usually for 10 minutes, just scroll using the headphones. The headphones are really nice, the sound quality is good. And then it turns off automatically. Now, the one or two things, actually, I'll caution you against. So one, if you have hair like mine that is not a pixie cut, then you would want to either do a really loose ponytail in the back or very loosely braid it. Because if you put this on and your hair is just down, when you take it off, sometimes you can have some hair get stuck either around the headphones or on these little silicone bumper thingies. And that's not a deal breaker that happened to me yesterday. You can gently kind of untangle it, but it's a lot easier to do if you don't have hair hanging like mine. It's a lot easier to just do a ponytail or a loose braid. And then the second thing, I wish that the timer was somewhere that I could actually see it because when I put this on, yes, it has the timer going on it, but I can't see that. It's on the side of my head. Even if I position a mirror somehow, I really can't see how many minutes are left. It doesn't matter because it's only 10 minutes, but if I could change one thing, that would be it. And this comes in a couple of sizes, uh, so you can check their website and they have, they provide measurement guides for the size that you might want based on your head size. So more importantly, did this actually do anything? The answer is yes. By the time that I started using this, I was already on Rogaine for over a year and Rogaine gave me really good results and continues giving me results. However, they plateaued. So it was first no results, then all that hair fall that's expected with Rogaine, so it got worse. Then the hair fall stopped, I started getting new growth, and then it was better, 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 and then it just kind of stayed at that certain level of better and has not gotten any better uh, after that, and it has not gotten worse. So it just sort of leveled off and it stayed there, so I am in the maintenance phase with Rogaine. If I ever stop using it, all of that growth will fall out and I'll be back where I started. So by the time I introduced this, I had very, very stable Rogaine results and I was able to see if this made any sort of difference on top of that, and yes, it had. Don't ask me about the science of this. I will put a link to their website that explains how it works, but it stimulates blood flow to the skin. And again, you don't feel warmth or anything like that. There's no sensation while you're using this. 
but it does make the hair fuller and thicker. I am noticing, especially in the front areas here, because even with Rogaine, when I'd pull back my hair, you could really see the scalp shining, especially on this side. And I will never forget in 2016 when I was getting my hair done for my wedding. This was before I had the worst of the hair loss. But like I said, my hair was never very thick. The hairstylist who was doing some braids and waves and stuff, she was talking to another stylist. Obviously, I can hear them because she's doing my hair. And she goes, yeah, I'm doing this kind of braid on this side because she's just so thin on this side. And if you're a hairstylist, don't say that. Like, it's okay that you know that and you see that. Trust me, the person with thin hair knows they have thin hair, but like, don't announce it like that in front of them because I still remember that and it's been almost seven years, okay? So my thin side, this is the thin side and it got so much better and I don't know what magic is in this, okay? But I know that you're supposed to use this for several months before you see results. I swear I saw results a couple months in just suddenly everything just looked better. And I don't know if maybe it's just from the increased blood flow, maybe the existing hair before I even got new growth or before anything got thicker, maybe the existing hair just was more vital. I don't know, but it looks better and I continue using it and I will continue using it. And if something happened to my device, I would get another one right away. And I would not mind paying my own money for this now that I've seen how it works for me. It's not magic though. It's not overnight. You're not going to go from no hair to a full, um, you know, Disney princess style mane. You won't. It takes time, but it's worth it for me. And I would say if somebody has the budget for this or if they can make it work somehow, it's worth it. This concludes the long-term improvement section. But again, if you have some kind of underlying medical thing that's happening, you might need a little bit more help than that. So please, 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 See a doctor, figure out what sort of hair loss you have and what's going on. Now we're moving on to the cosmetic improvement section. It's going to be much shorter because I'm not that great at styling hair. I am not very experienced with it. However, I did find a couple things that I really like and I feel like they make a difference. First thing, especially while you're shedding hair with Rogaine, I've talked about this before, is hair powder or hair shadow. This one is Mamont Peng Peng Hair Shadow. It's not the cleanest little uh, case because I do use it and I use it less now but I still use it like on filming days. It has a little mirror, has the hair shadow right there and a little poof on the bottom and all you do is uh, dab the poof in here and then apply it to areas. I'm not actually applying it but you can just pat it in to the areas that have sparse hair. And I know that's not actually a new trick because back in 2011, I was a bridesmaid in a wedding and I saw a makeup artist do that, but she was just using matte eyeshadow colors to sort of match the hair color. I have red hair, but I'm using this in a brown shade, or oh, it's reddish brown shade. If you're very, very blonde, maybe you need some sort of beige or something like that, there are black versions of this. But if you just have very, very, very fair uh, skin and hair, maybe very light hair, you don't want to put any shadow in, even putting some translucent powder to take away that shine of the scalp, because that's a lot of the times what stands out is the shiny scalp. You can just dab a little bit of translucent powder, a little setting powder, and that can help as well just take that little shininess away. So I do this not all the time. And actually that's how I knew the helmet was really working was that I felt like I could leave the house without dabbing this on and without um, the camouflaging things. And I used to put it all here as well because it was just so thin here and it's gotten so much better. Another thing is if you are somebody who colors their hair like I do, make sure you keep up with root touch-ups, especially if you're going from a light natural color to a darker color. I have light hair, but then I color it red and this red is darker than my natural blonde. If I don't stay up on coloring my roots in, the blonde roots start to grow out and my hair looks so much worse because that blonde root sort of blends with the scalp and it just looks like I have way less hair than I actually do. And also using henna, actually, it, it's so high in protein that it coats the hair strands and it makes them thicker temporarily. So it kind of works as a protein treatment. And it always, always, always makes my hair look thicker for a couple of weeks while the henna is fresh. This henna is not super fresh anymore, but I, on purpose, decided not to film this right after doing my hair with henna because I wanted to show you more of 
what it looks like on a normal sort of day and not when the henna is super super fresh and the hair looks extra good because of that. A couple of months ago I got a new to me product. I bought this with my own money. Actually everything in this video except for the hair serum, the Mise en Scene hair serum and the helmet I have bought with my own money. This is the Biolage Full Density Densifying Spray. You have to be a little bit careful with this because I think Spraying too much will make your hair feel like a broom, but I put this in when my hair is damp. After I do the Mesensan serum on the ends, I spray this toward the tops while the hair is wet still. Just kind of spray it around like that and um, use a wide tooth comb to gently spread it around. And this makes the hair just temporarily a little bit thicker, a little bit grittier. It's just less fine feeling and it gives a little bit better volume. So I just started using this a little while ago, but I like it and it, it does make a difference, I feel like. Again, my hair is just stiffer, so it holds the shape better. Of course, you don't have to use that exact one. If you have a different brand in mind or if you have a recommendation for me of a different brand for something like that, please leave me a comment. And in general, just blow drying hair does make it look better. It makes it look fuller for me anyway even though i wash my hair at night and i blow dry it before bed it still looks much better the next day than if i let it air dry even though i've slept on it since then so i i washed my hair last night i blow dried it and then i put in a loose braid and today it looks better and you can even see like in my part it's not shining the scalp is not shining like it normally did before rogaine and i am wearing a little bit of that hair shadow just right here in the front because I'm filming multiple videos today. So full disclosure, um, there is some going on. But in general, I, I don't have it anywhere else and I don't have it here and I don't have it, yeah, I just have it right here, right in the center. Okay, last cosmetic tip and don't do this too much. Please don't go overboard, but dry shampoo. Dry shampoo is so good. It always makes my hair look so much fuller. And typically I use this on the second day. So I wash my hair every other day. I wash your hair as often as you need to. Hair training is a myth though. So don't try to hair train. If your hair is oily, please don't try to train it. Leaving all the oil and the styling products on your scalp can actually be detrimental to hair growth efforts. So if your hair is dirty, please wash it. Every other day works for me. And oh, <laughs> on the second day, I use this. Actually, the key is to use it the night before. I washed my hair last night. Today is not a wash day, so tonight before I go to bed, I could spray this on if I wanted to and not brush it through or anything like that. And then tomorrow morning, I'll wake up and my hair will look very clean and very full. And before my hair was this full, again, it's still not like super dense now, but that's the best that my hair has ever looked. Some of it is just genetics, okay? Um, but before my hair was in the state that it is now, when I was really struggling, when it was at its worst, I would use dry shampoo on my clean day. I would, I would do that. So I would wash my hair at night and then wake up the next morning and spray some dry shampoo in it for volume purposes. Because somehow dry shampoo at the roots just makes a bigger difference than any mousse, any kind of hairspray, anything that I've ever tried. This is the Amica Perk Up shampoo. This is their jumbo version. And it's my favorite dry shampoo because it doesn't leave any white streaks. And I've been using this for a very long time. I usually stock up around this time of year because they'll have holiday sets. I'll put some links in the description box. So right, I think this year the sets have a full size, not the jumbo, but a full size and then a travel size in it. And their travel sizes are pretty generous. They're not tiny. They're still pretty tall, just like a skinny bottle. So I use this. That's it for hair and it might be my last hair progress video unless something else new comes out or I try something new because I feel like I'm in the maintenance phase now. It's probably not going to get any better. I'm just striving for not worse because I'm pretty happy with how it is right now. It's at least back to my baseline of what it used to be when I was in high school, when I was in college, what my normal hair was like before I had some health challenges before I had my children, before I had all the stress that I have now. If you're struggling with hair loss, I definitely encourage you to take some steps to address it because by the time that we notice that our hair is thin, it usually means we've lost 30 to 40% of it. At least that's what the dermatologists say. So please don't wait. Go address it, talk to a professional. You definitely do not have to make public content about it if that's not your thing, but please don't be ashamed to reach out to somebody for help, to an expert, and address it because the difference that it makes self-esteem-wise is just, it's indescribable. I really struggled those 
couple of months of Rogaine hair fall. I knew it was temporary, but dang it, it was really difficult. And before that, uh, when it was just thin and you, know, you could see the scalp, and I felt like if I pulled up my hair in a ponytail, you could see mostly skin. And now you can see mostly hair, but you could see mostly skin, and it was just, it was terrible. It was not fun. So I don't want, I don't want that for you. It's very, very common, and it's for some reason more acceptable for men to have hair problems. That's why there's minoxidil for men everywhere than it is for women, but we as women go through a lot, our bodies go through a lot, whether or not we have children or not, and it's a thing, okay? Hair loss happens, it's part of the human condition, and if you don't like it, do something about it. There are lots and lots and lots of different things available. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you have your own advice or any sort of tips or products or anything I've missed, if you want to help me out, please leave me a comment because I'm always learning. But you can find me on Instagram at kbeautyhobbit, my blog kbeautyhobbit.com, and in my private Facebook group, Korean Beauty Fanatics. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you in my next video. Until then, please remember to always listen to your skin. Thank you so much.